Hey, welcome back. So this is my 10 things list of movie scores that rock, and we're all going to do this one because this is such an epic, uh, an epic topic. So I'm going to introduce our guest today. We have the president and the conductors of the Cinematic Symphony. Say hello to everyone out in TV land. Hi, everyone in TV land. I'm Shelley Ager, the president of Cinematic Symphony. Thanks for having us. Hi, Jesus Torres, conductor. And I'm Brian Satterwhite. I'm uh, often uh, MC and assistant conductor of the group. So we discovered them by complete accident. We'll talk about that later. I want to get into this 10 things list simply because I like what I like. I'm not, gonna, I'm not even going to front about what it. What he's saying <laughs> is he's shallow and has no taste. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so coming at number 10, I have Jaws. Who does not know the theme song of Jaws? My son was saying it at like three years old. This is one of the most epic film scores ever. It's transcended cultures to where you can go to any pool, any ocean, and see kids who've never seen Jaws, you can see them doing the dun dun yeah. dun dun, and it's become part of like ingrained in our culture, and that's something very, very few rare scores have been able to achieve. Exactly, oh. and that's why I came into my number 10, because it made me afraid to go on the water, I'm not gonna lie. Point for you <laughs> if we were keeping tally score patches. I'm gonna win anyways, because I'm one of the hosts of the show, we can't lose. <laughs> that's how it works, we get Yay. that free card. <laughs> All right. Coming in at number nine, I have E.T. There was a way that it translated the friendliness and alienness in a really interesting way. The score? The score of E.T. You know when they're going across the room? I think definitely when you hear do, 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 that definitely it's Elliot and flying over the moon. You, you can definitely, definitely picture it. Um, there's a lot of John Williams, I think, on people's top ten list because he happens to sort of be the most. Like, <laughs> <laughs> there's a Bring lot of John, there's a lot of John Williams music on top ten list. Uh, first of all, it's certainly very memorable mm. music, but there are others as well. I just thought I need to say that. Okay, so <laughs> we're going into composer. number eight, which is another as well, uh, Man of Steel, the new Sp Superman movie. The new one? <laughs> yes, that score absolutely rocked my world. Have you guys heard it yet? I, I think it's Hans Zimmer. I have heard it. Um, I have heard it, but I, I have a tendency, especially since being involved with Cinematic Symphony, I'll hear, uh, when I go to the movies, what I find is that I actually now am more caught up in listening to the score than I am in paying attention to the action. But I really need time to evaluate, and I'm not finished evaluating this one yet. I haven't, I haven't decided. I was completely sold during all the action scenes and just that theme he carried throughout that was also mm. in the trailers that just kind of set the whole mood for a brand new superhero score. Because I think that's one of the hardest things to do with a superhero score. They're always kind of weird. Everyone goes off the classic Superman, which mm. I don't think they should anymore. It's time for something new. Do you say that because there's so many bad superhero scores? Yes. Uh, well, they, don't, they don't seem to really fit. Yeah. Um, Danny Elfman came close to Spider-Man, but they all just kind of seem to be like, they don't really seem to, how would you do it? And this one did a really good job for, and I hate Superman, but I love this movie. <laughs> I was all about this movie. I went absolutely crazy for this movie. So coming at number seven, the only Disney one I have on here is Beauty and the Beast. I freaking love Disney music, and I think Beauty and the Thank Beast you. is Thank the best you. one. I Okay, I'm so sorry. Why? It is they one of the best down. musical scores ever. It's a good, it's a very good musical score, but the good thing, the good thing about what we're discussing is that it's so subjective. My yeah. list is mm -hmm. vastly different you, than yours, and is vastly well, different. Well, here's than a Ryan's. question: If you had to pick a Disney score, which one would you pick? Uh, I. Jungle Book. Jungle Book. Really? Oh, yeah. Interesting that's choice. Not bad. Yeah. The Lion King. Uh, Hans Zimmer. Yeah. <laughs> Academy Award. Very much so. You're the odd man out. I am the odd man out because I, I will say I'm going to date myself, and because of my age, that I actually have, was never Please caught up. Please don't say Pete's Dragon. I'm not. <laughs> 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 I would put Peach Dragon above Beauty and the Beast. Though. For those that don't know, we actually played Peach Dragon in a recent Disney concert of ours. So I actually don't have what I'm going to call an emotional attachment to the uh, to the dis kind of yeah. the Disney reboot of the '90s. But I did like. Um, see now I don't. I couldn't even name a movie if I tried. Little Mermaid. I did like Little Mermaid, actually. <laughs> this is a much of a Chris Rachel, thing. your turn. Disney? I, I hate Disney. I'm sorry. I just do. I'm sorry. Someone I, find me a new co-host. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know I what? if we could do this. Beauty and the Beast is the story of Stockholm Syndrome. I just really can't get into it. Oh, anyways. <laughs> All right. Coming in at number six, I have Raiders of the Lost Ark with Indiana Jones. Okay, we're back yes. on terms now. Yeah, we're back on even terms, I guess. Yeah. So Too low. Too low. <laughs> yeah. It's too low. And, I, and uh, Parade of the Slave Children is sublime. Yeah. It's just... Sorry, out of context, just that one sentence, like, really, it was. You just got to see it. <laughs> I think that movie had one of the more epic scores. They just didn't really achieve that with Temple of Doom and 
the other one, and not, it's certainly not Crystal Skull, We're even not, though I like the movie. Yeah, there's still three. Yeah, there's still three. There's only three. Yeah. The fourth Crystal one Skull, count. you have to count. It's not that bad outside of the kid and the not Nazis and the weird. Yeah, anyways. <laughs> All right, so that's my number six. So number five, I put Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part Two. Simply because that's all very specific to part because two. Because all of the movies had the same type of theme, but each one was individual, and they all came together in Deathly Hollows, especially at that very last battle. And it was like for me an epic culminating of culminating of like ten culmination. years of loving these movies, loving these books, loving these musics, especially because I listened to all of them all the time, like all the freaking time. And it was just it was so nice to just have a good finale that tied all the themes and all the elements together in a nice score. I like both the Deathly Hollow scores, but I would not put it above Azkaban, the third one that John Azkaban yeah. was that's really a, good. That's my favorite book. That's a fantastic like, score. Yeah, yeah, I had to give it to the one because that's when <laughs> Voldemort dies. Spoiler! In case you haven't watched it, he <laughs> dies! Um, yeah, so that's why I did Harry Potter Part 2. So coming in at number four is Alien. And everyone looks at me weird like this, but no, I'm, actually, I'm actually I'm actually down with him on if Alien. I'm wrong, why would anybody look at you weird? Because <laughs> they're like, we don't remember the music. I said, that's how you know the music did its job because mm. it accentuated the movie so perfectly that you didn't notice it. It made the tension, it made the darkness, it made the creepiness. I can't sleep after I watch those movies. They make yeah. fun of me. It's Alien, one of the great Alien scare the crap out. It's of me. one of the great horror scores ever written. I, I mean, completely it's agree. Flat out. It's absolutely. Yeah. Is that especially from the opening where it was like single lines coming up. I mean, from then on, you were just done. Mm. Yeah, like you're so drawn in. And if you've ever heard any of these things or watch some of these things just with the pre-release without any of the music, such a difference, especially with something like a horror movie. You're like, well, that's not that scary, but it's just a guy in a rubber suit. And then the music comes on, you're like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd be behind you crying. Those movies get crap out of me. All right, so number three. I put Speed Racer because this is the first time I discovered Michael oh, well, Giacchino. 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 I freaking think that movie's highly underrated. It's I one of too. the best live action animated anime movies ever. And you take the task of trying to take something as that crazy as Speed Racer to a live action movie, melding animation, live action. He did a fantastic job. I had an interesting experience where I saw that movie about a month early before it came out. Uh -huh. And I was in there and I was absolutely floored by it. I was like, I can't wait for the sequel. I was like, this movie is going to make a ton of money. This is the greatest thing I've seen in a long time. And when it tanked as bad as it did, I. I was never felt more disconnected from public opinion in my entire film life. I just see life. people didn't get it. I don't and know. They say I the still study it, the music, wonder, and why. But they didn't like the movie, but they loved the music. The music's fantastic. They loved it. They're like, I, you don't I, like the movie? What's I, this in the soundtrack? I kind of consider it our, our modern day Rocky. You know, when, you, when you hear Rocky and you hear that music, you want to get up, you want to cheer. Dun, dun, That's dun, how I felt dun. Speed Racer. Oh, I wanted man. to get up, I wanted to cheer. I like I, you. I, 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 I like you already. <laughs> yeah. no matter, I can tell you, no matter what you have on your list, you're okay because you have Speed Racer on there. So, number two is the only Danny Elfman I put on here, which was Edward Scissorhands. It's great. That. Well, how did I actually ruin it? I, for a modern fairy tale that needed a modern fantasy score, and Elfman delivered 100%. I love Danny Elfman. I can just listen to Danny Elfman scores. I will day. listen to anything he does. I have them all. I bought the yeah. Tim I Burton actually also box. have um, all of his stuff from Oingo Boingo, because I just love it. I love Danny Elfman. <laughs> I wasn't too much of a fan of Oingo girls, Boingo. Girls. Yeah, I love Oingo. First of all, I know Danny Elfman as Oingo Boingo, originally. Mm -hmm. And... The one thing that we have not done, actually, with Cinematic Symphony is an all Danny Elfman <gasps> concert. I would We've like not to go to that concert, please. And so we can <laughs> definitely put that on our list. Definitely like Danny Elfman, and I won't say, did he do Batman? Did yes. He? The first, the uh, Michael Keaton. He did, he did Batman, Batman, Batman Returns. comprehensive with every single Birth of a Penguin <laughs> was a really good song so for Batman much, Returns. Right. So much Danny Elfman that you can pick and choose the there's best. A, there's a lot. I, I'm, I'm actually a film composer here in Austin, and Edward Scissorhands is the score that made me want to be a film composer. Uh, I mean, it's so just so it's very, beautiful. Yeah, it's a very personal connection with me. So, All right, and so Fantastic. coming in at number one, hands down the most influential, best score ever, Empire Strikes Back. It set the tone for every Star Wars movie. Not New Hope, but I was like playing. Empire set it all. I'll give you that, actually. I mean... There, there's nothing to say. There to is that. nothing yeah. that I, I can happen, top that. I, I definitely happen to. I happen to agree with that. In fact, I brought the, with me the AFI list, and Star Ooh. Wars is listed uh, as number one film score. You so. don't see Star Trek on there, do you? <laughs> don't make me. Do not make me hit you on set. <laughs> yeah, I. I, 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 I gave you accepting that that is an excellent score. Yes, Good. I'm very opinionated about Star Trek. Jim, definitely in the Star Trek camp myself. Thank you. We will keep her now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I know you too. Anyway, so. Are you guys going to lie to here? The gentlemen at the ends are all like, uh, where's the win-win? And we're like, yes, Trek for us, wars for them. Trek. Mm. 